بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الكرام ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We pray for an acceptance of this Isha prayer and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, helps us to establish our characters the way how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established him with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to continue tonight talking about the description of Prophet's character. And we will start with a hadith from Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, He, referring to Prophet والسلام, left no beautiful counsel save that he called us to it and commanded us to observe it. And he left nothing that was fraudulent or he said shameful or despicable save that he warned us of it and forbade us from it. So, whatever was important for people to know, to stay away from, Prophet ﷺ gave to people the right advice and he told them stay away from such and such uh, action or such and such character. Um, things that he needed to emphasize so people get, can start practicing or can connect with, he told them. Now, somebody may say, well, we live in the 21st century and many issues that were not uh, present at his time, uh, they are present nowadays. So how do we deal with uh, different uh, matters that we have? And sometimes you hear scholars saying permissible and some other scholars say not permissible and some others say makruh, uh, somewhere in the middle, for example. Uh, which is not a good thing to do, but it doesn't fall under the category of haram. So then how do we deal with these things? Islam is a religion that uh, has the fiqh or the jurisprudence, the law, is something that evolves. It evolves based on the foundations that are found in the Quran and the hadith, the sound hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is... Uh, some, uh, it is uh, something that evolves based on the time and the place. Let's say, for example, there are drugs being used nowadays. Is it permissible or isn't it permissible? You're going to go, this is the job of the scholars of the fuqaha to go back to the primary sources and to say, you know what, yes, we understand that marijuana, for example, did not e exist. Um, I'm not saying as... Uh, as a flower or as a, you know, as a, as a tree did not, uh, it, it perhaps existed at that time, but I'm saying people, they didn't use it the way how they're using it nowadays. And um, at least based on my knowledge. But regardless, I mean, we don't see verses of the Quran or hadith of Prophet Sallallahu referring to that, right? Regardless whether it was used somewhere or it was not used anywhere, we don't see this in the uh, hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa So we have, you know, it, as I said, it is the job of the scholars, of those fuqaha, to come up with a ruling based on a similar case that used to exist back at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And simply, you can say that anything that is intoxicating is haram. And as a matter of fact, you have a hadith based on that. You have a hadith that says every intoxicant is haram, is forbidden. So is marijuana for example an intoxicant or not and the medical examiners will say that this is an intoxicant is it haram yes so automatically it becomes haram and uh, but sometimes uh, it can be halal as well when <laughs> because people they would be looking for a fatwa for somebody who will say that you know i just need a fatwa for it to be you know not legalized by the state but also to be legalized by islam as well and yes, there are scholars who spoke about uh, uh, based on individual cases where not just a typical doctor, but a Muslim doctor who knows what is halal and what is haram from the Islamic perspective will give uh, the recommendation and will say based on your situation, whether it is from an extreme anxiety or an extreme depression or 
uh, extreme pain in the body sometimes, you know, they will prescribe, these Muslim doctors who know what halal is and haram is, they will say that, you know what, um, I believe that if you do this, if you use this for medical purposes, it's going to be better for you than using a list of medications. That is harmful too, but it's going to cause less harm than probably multiple medications that a person may use. But this is not in the hands of the human himself or herself to say, oh, I have pain or I have a little bit of anxiety, now I'm going to start using marijuana because that makes me feel better. Alcohol will do that too, it will remove the stress away for you, but uh, there is going to be consequences that you have to deal with later on or your body has to deal with because of the intoxicant that goes inside of your body. Pretty much the harm that goes in your body. So um, this, is, this is very important to understand. Uh, that scholars, again, it's not the issue of marijuana, but what I'm trying to say to you here tonight is that uh, many of these issues or matters that may not have existed at that time, uh, scholars, it is their responsibility to issue new fatwas, you know, based on those uh, primary sources that they use. But at that time, an Abi alayhi salatu salam warned the people for anything that needed to, to, uh, to, uh, to be warned, anything that people needed to be warned, Prophet ﷺ did his job and he warned them. And anything that people needed to comply with or implement, he وسلم, also clarified those matters to them as well. Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa counseled me saying, O Mu'adh, I counsel you to fear God. Speak truthful. Speak truthful. Uh, tr speak truthfully. Fulfill solemn oaths. Bear trusts. Refrain from uh, perfid perfidious perfidiousness. Look after the neighbor. Extend mercy to the orphan. Be available, available in speech. A fable in speech. Extend greetings of peace. Perform good works. Shorten hopes. Shorten hopes in this world. Remain steadfast in faith. Istiqama. Gain deep understanding of the Quran. Love the hereafter. Be anxious regarding the final reckoning. And to be humble. And I forbid you to insult a wise sage, a saint, a righteous person. I forbid you to belie a truthful man or obey a sinner or disobey a just leader and to sow corruption. And I counsel you to fear Allah with regard to every stone, tree, or village, and to repent for every sin, a secret repentance for a secret sin, and an open repentance for an open sin. This is how the Prophet wasallam instilled property within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala servants and invited them to noble qualities of character and good manners as well. So this hadith of Sayyidina Mu'ad bin Jabal is a very important hadith. If we're able to take this advice of an Nabi alayhi salatu salam to stay away from what he tells us to stay away from and to fulfill what he recommends us to fulfill, I think our character is going to shine with the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. May Allah make us among those who fulfill these recommendations recommended by our blessed and beloved Prophet alayhi salatu salam. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين